Hello and welcome to the print. This is Fariha Iftikhar, and today we have with us IIT Delhi Director Professor Rangan Banerjee to discuss about the new revived, revamped curriculum of IIT Delhi, which was announced yesterday. That is on May twenty seventh. Welcome to the print, sir. Thank you, Fariha. Please go sir, ahead. First, first of all, we would like to know uh, why IIT Delhi decided to revamp its curriculum and come up with this outcome-based curriculum, as it is saying it is. could you please tell, give us a background so you know we always have been looking at keeping our curriculum relevant and something which is uh, which can ensure that our graduates are future ready so every it's about every 10 years or so we do a full fledged curriculum review and revamp the last one that happened was in 2013 we started this exercise in 2022 and it has taken us some time because we did extensive stakeholder uh, consultations and we've come up with this new curriculum uh, in between the over curriculum reviews uh, modifications changes happen in an incremental basis but here what we have done is all our programs whether it is btech mtech msc phd all programs have been looked at reviewed and revamped sir what are the key key highlights of this uh, revised curriculum if you can just take us through so the key highlights for you the first one is that we want to provide more flexibility and choices to our students and that is one of the underlying features of this curriculum review the second thing that we have is that we would like to have more hands on component so whether it is in building things and making you know, prototypes or it is through laboratories uh, we have to we want to get that flavor which will be important in engineering and science and so that's another feature that is that uh, we have also highlighted two specific things that we would like any iit delhi graduate would be competent and comfortable in the modern techniques of ai so we have ensured that there is an ai component in every curriculum in the institute and also sustainability and then we are also looking at professional ethics so these are the sort of overarching uh, things which are there we have taken efforts also to ensure that especially our young undergraduates the people who come in after the 12th standard Uh, they get a soft entry into the institute so that in the initial phase we've reduced the number of credits in the first semester we've also ensured that the class sizes in the first year are reduced earlier we used to have class sizes of sometimes 300 and sometimes more than 300 we have now insisted that the class size in the first year is going to be 150 or less and uh, we are also yeah yeah and we are also uh, ensuring that in the first year itself a student will get a flavor at least one course from the discipline in which they have registered for so that's another feature and in all of this we marginally reduce the total number of credits we have also enhanced the choices more of uh, more of electives even within the core many departments have provided flexible core so those are some of the things we have given options for students who want to specialize in their own discipline to go for an honors apart from the degree they can also go for a minor in some other discipline we also created a systematic uh, option for students to do bachelor and master so at the end of the third year a student may say that okay i have been material science and engineering but i want to to do i want to do a masters in the school of ai in machine intelligence and data sciences so he or she can actually opt for that and in 5 years complete a btech in material science and engineering and a mtech in machine intelligence and data sciences so this is in uh, this was already there but we've streamlined it and made it much more flexible uh, so that students have many more choices 
we continue to retain the option for students to change their branches at the end of a year and we had uh, we believe that this gives uh, students before they come into iit they have some perception of the disciplines but when they come in they may may feel they want to do something else so at the end of a year this choice is being given uh, continues to be given it used to be always there but some some institutions have removed this we have we continue to do that we had a lot of discussion and debate on this uh, what i can uh, understand it's like multidisciplinarity option for interdisciplinary yes. education as recommended by nep also right so Absolutely. can you say sir this new curriculum is in line with nep 2020 also yes it is and you know for you we have at the iits we've always had a credit framework uh, we've always had choices for instance we've had a focus we have a basic sciences we have humanities even in the engineering curriculum we've always had that um, but there are many other features which are consistent with nep the flexibility the choices multidisciplinarity all of that is so it is it is definitely uh, compliant with nep in that sense so you just mentioned about incorporating ai also in curriculum yes. at uh, all levels probably sir can you please elaborate on it how is this be incorporated and how faculty will also be trained for that so actually uh, you know what we have done is there's a first year course on computer science in that there'll be one component where people, uh, students will be uh, taught how to break up a complicated problem into different components and then use ai tools to do that so that's an initial orientation we have also asked each discipline uh, when they make their curriculum revision to tell us whether they have already incorporated in their courses an ai course or they want to take a course from the from our school of ai or uh, computer science department so this is how we have not mandated this but we have mandated that every student has have had to have at least a specialized course on ai sir could you we tell also our... created a set of guidelines for ethical yes. use of ai and we believe that you know this is something which we need to think about uh, is it fair to use ai in a assignment that you submit how does the what is a fair use of ai by the faculty member so these are some of the things we've been grappling with we had a committee and we've created a set of guidelines and we will keep revisiting this because we have to be able to use ai responsibly we should uh, use the power of it yet we should be able to meet our learning objectives and get the skill sets that we need so this there's always a balance absolutely striking that balance right is a challenge right now for everyone yes. students yes. faculty yes sir another thing i would like to know sir right now we are completing 5 years of national education policy 2020 now what are the like biggest advantages and challenges of nep so far for iit specifically so for iit is the challenge which is there is you know in the uh, nep there is a multiple entry multiple exit yeah. and uh, in the iit framework our, all our admissions are through the joint entrance exam the je advance and je mains before that so unfortunately we are not able to take all the students who want to study at our institution so in terms of fairness if we allow someone and so when there is a student who hasn't been given a chance and we are not able to scale that so we have to we can provide only limited options of multiple entry provided the person is from another institution and has got a je rank which would have enabled him or her to have got and that is in terms of the fairness multiple exit is something which we can easily do and we are we are happy with this the fact that our students don't want to leave the institute without the degree without the btech degree so they wouldn't want to leave after so we do have those options we do have instead of mtech if you don't do you can do a postgraduate diploma instead of btech so we'll keep those options but i'm not sure that many people will be taking those options so in theory we will have multiple exit but in practice it may not be that much conversant but in others on all other senses there is no uh, problem with i mean we do not have any difficulty in implementing the spirit of the 
NEP. And sure. uh, that is something which we are trying to do, yes. And sir, after the successful launch of IIT Delhi campus in Abu Dhabi, is there a plan in the pipeline to start any other international campus? No, Faria, there is no plan to start any other international campus. Uh, starting up a campus outside the country is a big challenge. And to make it successful is something which we are working on very actively. We wanted the campus that we have started in Abu Dhabi is a full-fledged research campus. Yeah. We have BTEC, we have MTEC, and we have PhD. We plan to have significant research infrastructure there. We want to, we have now just advertised for international faculty on the Abu Dhabi campus. So we have our hands full with the Abu Dhabi campus, but we do expect, you know, it will take five to 10 years to make it a really world-class institution. We expect that this institution that we create in, uh, we are creating in Abu Dhabi, will meet the goals of UAE as well as India. And uh, that is why we do not want to think of another campus, at least not in the next uh, decade or so. Our focus is on this. Yeah. Yeah. So my last question, sir, last year, uh, there were issues in case of placements, not just IIT, Delhi or any other IIT. Every institute had faced the problem in placements. And this recently, a parliamentary committee also flagged it. How is the situation this year, sir, so far? The situation this year is better than last year. And uh, I'll tell you one thing, Faria, the there are changes in uh, the nature of the jobs and the industry, which is a sort of which goes year to year. And the number of students that we have placed last year is higher than the year before and this year is even better the question is this that you know we have to look at the the whole the data in an overall sense uh, the number of students appearing for placement because of the growth in the number of students has increased the jobs have not proportionately increased but the jobs have increased compared to previous and we are taking steps in this. Uh, th there are also students have many choices. So there is a significant, we do did an exit survey. And we found, for instance, even last year, you were talking about last year, we found a, only a small percentage of our students were still at the time of the convocation. And we can share that data with you. Only a small percentage was still looking for jobs. So people, so there are, uh, reasonable percentage of students who are actually uh, looking at startups and incubation and uh, so i think we do need to be a, we need, do need to look at the you know uh, what is happening in terms of job scenarios but i don't think it's a it is not something which is a cause for concern or worry and it has uh, it's been blown out a little bit out of proportion, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah. I think our students are really getting, still getting very good placements. And uh, this year, the placements have been actually uh, better than the last year. Uh, that is a wonderful news. We would look forward to get a data on it soon.